Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm excited to bring you another tutorial where I'll be showing you how I color graded this video. In this session, I'll be using DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools along with some fantastic third-party plugins like Dehancer Pro, Mononote DCTLs and a creative lot to achieve the final look. If you are specifically looking for tutorials that focus only on DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools, don't worry, I've got you covered. Feel free to check out my channel for more focused tutorials on just that. So, without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. Here I've already imported the footage we'll be working on. Before we dive into grading, let's quickly check its video specs and prepare our project settings. This footage is shot on a Blackmagic 6K Pro with a resolution of 6144 by 3456. Dividing these gives us an aspect ratio of 1.77, which is essentially a standard 16.9. For this tutorial, I'll be downsizing it to 3840 by 2160. Let's make that adjustment now. Next, let me show you my color management settings. I use a CSD, Color Space Transform Workflow, so my color science is set to DaVinci YRGB. And I use DaVinci Intermediate as my timeline color space. For the output color space, I stick with the standard Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which works perfectly for most displays. And by the way, uh, just one quick tip, uh, make sure your 3D LUT interpolation is set to tetrahedral uh, for a more accurate application of any LUTs we'll be using later in this workflow. Now that we're all set, let's jump into the grading workflow. The first step is to drop the footage into the timeline and head over to the color page. Our initial task is to apply input and output color space transforms, CSDs, so we can view the footage in its true color space. For the input CSD, we'll convert from the black magic color space to DaVinci Intermediate. Make sure to turn off tone mapping here to preserve the natural highlights and shadows in the footage. Next, in the output CSD, we'll convert from DaVinci Intermediate to Rec. 709. For this step, let's set the tone mapping to a maximum of 10,000 nits to ensure smooth highlight rollovers. So, with these transforms applied, our footage is now properly set up and we can move forward with the grading workflow. Now, let's add three serial nodes for our primary adjustments, uh, which are contrast, balance, and exposure. These steps will help us create a solid foundation for the grading process. Let's name these nodes to keep things organized. Before we dive into these adjustments though, I want to add my favorite film print profile, the Kodak 2383. For convenience, I'll use the Dehancer Pro plugin, but if you prefer using DaVinci Resolve's built-in LUTs instead, I've covered that in detail in some of my other tutorials, uh, so feel free to check them out. Let's first tweak the default settings in Dehancer to better suit our footage, uh, then add the LUT. I feel the default strength is a little too strong, so I'll lower the output level to tone it down a bit. That's looking much better. Next, I'll add a parallel note for another LUT. Uh, this LUT is part of a pack uh, created by colorist Colin Kelly, which you can purchase using the link in the description. I'll also reduce this LUT's uh, strength by half for a more subtle natural effect. Now let's take a quick look at the difference so far. Okay, keep in mind we haven't started the primary grading yet. Uh, I like to add these creative elements early on because adding them later can affect the contrast and exposure adjustments. So by setting them up now, we avoid unnecessary back and forth later on. All right, now that the base is ready, let's move on to the primaries to balance the image. For contrast, I avoid using the contrast slider here. Instead, I rely on the lift and gain wheels, uh, which I use as my contrast and pivot uh, controls. This approach offers more precise control over the different tonal ranges within the image, allowing for a more nuanced uh, adjustment. For balance, I use the offset wheel to achieve a neutral, even look uh, at this stage. 
Let me make a few fine-tune adjustments here. By the way, don't worry about the skin tones yet. We'll address that in a later step. Perfect. You'll notice that our image now sits neatly at the center of the vector scope, indicating that it's naturally balanced. Lastly, let's adjust the exposure. For this, I'll use the HDR exposure slider. Okay, let's focus on her skin, as she's the main talent. It's crucial to ensure she's properly exposed. Here, I recommend using the waveform monitor to guide your adjustments. Make sure your display qualifier focus is enabled. As you can see here, uh, her face is underexposed, so I'll lift it to a range of uh, 512 to 640 on the waveform, which is ideal for daylight settings. All right, there we go. I'll also bring up the darker parts of the image slightly to retain detail and balance in the shadows. Now, let's take a look at how far we've come with the primary grading. The image is looking more balanced now, ready for the next steps. For the look development, let's add another node. In this node, I'll apply Dehancer Pro again, because I want to use one of their film profiles, uh, which I think are a fantastic way to achieve a more cinematic image. First, I'll again disable the default settings and switch to high quality mode to ensure uh, we are getting the best output possible. Okay, for this specific footage, I want to use the Kodak Vision 3 50D film profile. Uh, I think it works beautifully with this scene. Again, I'll reduce the strength of the profile uh, slightly to make sure it blends seamlessly with the rest of the grade. You may notice that this profile has lowered the saturation a bit, but don't worry, we'll address that in the next node now. Okay, let's add another dehancer node and disable the default settings. By the way, the reason I'm using three separate dehancer nodes is to maintain precise control over each effect, uh, allowing me to manipulate them individually without interfering with the others. We'll use this final dehancer node to finalize our look. First, I want to bring back some saturation so we can better assess the image. To do this, I'll use dehancer's film developer tool. Let's increase both the contrast and color intensity. There we go. Let's toggle it on and off to see the difference. Much better. Next, I'll enable film compression to smooth out highlights and shadows. Here we can also increase the color density for a richer, more cinematic look. By the way, just a reminder, if you want to buy a Dehancer Pro, uh, you can use the code MEDIAB10 uh, for 10% discount. I always use it in my workflow uh, as it helps me a lot uh, with getting a cinematic uh, look. Okay, back to the grading. Now I'll adjust the temperature to give the footage a warmer feel since it is golden hour and the sun is hitting uh, her face. I may also tweak the tint slightly to complement the scene. Let's toggle them on and off. Looking great. Lastly, let's add some halation and bloom effects here to enhance the highlights and to give the image a subtle glow. For these effects, I prefer using custom settings as it gives me more control over the look. Let's toggle on and off. Beautiful. In the next node, I want to add a bleach bypass effect uh, to enhance our look even further. For this, I'll use DaVinci Resolve's new tool, the Film Look Creator. I think this is an excellent tool for adding creative film effects. First, let's start with a clean slate and apply some bleach bypass. Perfect. This gives the image a unique dramatic feel. Uh, here, we can also explore some film looks. Uh, I want to try the vintage film look here for this footage. I think I'll lower its strength to ensure it doesn't overpower the rest of the grade. And let's also bring back the skin tones here, uh, making sure they look natural and balanced. There we go. The warm look this creates is absolutely stunning. It really suits the mood of the footage, I think. Oh, quick note. To access this tool, make sure you are using DaVinci Resolve uh, 19 or later. Now, when I look at the bright parts of the car, I notice a slight red cast. To correct this and bring out the cyan color of the car, I'll use Mononode's RGB split. Let's reduce the reds in the highlights. 
it's it's a subtle change but it makes a noticeable difference i think now as a final touch uh, let's add three more notes to fine tune the hue dance dance saturation and for these i'll be using mono notes dctls in the first note i'll focus on skin tones uh, looking at the vector scope you can see her skin is slightly off uh, compared to the skin tone indicator let's make some adjustments there it's now closer to skin tone guideline in the next note let's adjust the density i'll start by increasing the density of her skin tones uh, to add depth then i'll add some global density to the entire image uh, for a richer look great that's looking much better for the saturation node, I want to increase the saturation of her shirt. However, since the color of the shirt is similar to her skin tones, I'll increase the deep slider to ensure the adjustment does not affect her skin. Perfect. Finally, let's add one more saturation node to tweak the cyan and blue colors. I'll increase the cyan saturation slightly to enhance the car's color. At the same time, I'll reduce the blue saturation as the windshield looks uh, overly saturated. Let's take a look at the difference these DCTLs adjustments made. Stunning. The image feels much more polished and balanced. And there it is, our final beautifully color graded image. We have walked through every step from setting up the color space transforms to refining the look development with tools like the Enhancer Pro and Mononote DCTLs. Along the way, we also fine-tuned the contrast, skin tones, saturation, and even tackled specific details like the cars and highlights. So, don't forget, color grading is all about attention to detail and creative expression. And I hope this tutorial has inspired you to explore new techniques and tools in your own projects. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to support the channel and stay updated on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.